Hi and welcome to today's chess lesson where we are going to learn about the most important piece in our chess army, the king. Now the starting position for the king is behind his pawns. Remember the white pawns are on the second rank and the king finds himself in the middle behind those pawns. Consider this position and assume that it is black's turn to move. You'll notice that the king always starts in the color opposite his own color. So for example, the white king starts on a dark square, while the black king starts on a light square. So let's look at how kings move. A king can move in any direction, but only one square at a time. So the white king may move to this square, to that square, to that square, this one, this one, this one, or that one. The white king is not allowed to move to that square because of one very important rule. A king may never move to a square that is being attacked by the other pieces. This is probably one of the most important chess rules that beginners do not understand. A king may never move to a square that the other team is attacking. The reason why this king is not allowed to move to that square is because the other king is attacking that square. The black king is attacking these squares. The black king is also attacking this square even though the white king is also attacking that square. That means neither one of the two kings is allowed to move to those squares. Now that makes one very simple rule that two kings can never stand right next to each other. If someone were to make a move like this, we'd say he makes an illegal move. He's not allowed to make that move and he must take his move back and make a new move. Okay, so let's quickly recap. A king starts in the center of the board behind his pawns on a square that is opposite his own color. A king may move one square in any direction. So this white king may move here, 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 or here. But he's never allowed to move to a square that is being attacked by our enemy. So if there was a pawn standing here, remember that pawns attack diagonally forward. This pawn is attacking this square and that square. That means that king is not allowed to move to any of those two squares. The only square this king is allowed to move is this square or that square. But the king is also allowed to capture the pawn. Since a king attacks the same way as he moves, he is allowed to capture any piece that is standing one square away from him that is not being defended by an enemy piece. So for example, if we had a king defending the pawn, do you see now if white were to capture the pawn, he'd be standing on a square that is being attacked by the enemy king. He's not allowed to do that. He must take back his move and make a different move. Let's see what are the squares that the black team is attacking. The black pawn is attacking this and this square. The black king is attacking d2, c2, c3, c4, d4, e4, and e3. And he's also defending the e2 pawn. That means that the white king is not allowed to move to any of those squares. If he wants to move, the only square that is safe for him to move to is the f2 square. If black moves his pawn on f3 to f2, we notice how he's attacking the king standing on e1. Whenever a king is being attacked, we say check. Check means that that king is standing on a square that is being attacked. And we know the rule is a king may never stay on a square that is being attacked. 
he has to stop the attack on that square. What is his options? Well, remember that he can't move to this and that square because the pawn on e2 is attacking those two squares. He can't move to d2 because of the king. That means the white king is allowed to move to that square. So what would happen if that pawn was defended? Let's go back. Let's imagine there was a pawn on g3. The pawn on g3 is now attacking the h2 and the f2 square. Since there's a black pawn standing on the f2 square, that black pawn is being defended by his own pawn. The king is therefore not allowed to move to that square. If he moves there, he'll be attacked by an enemy piece, and that is an illegal move in chess. He has to take back his move and make a different move. Okay, so where can he move to? Can't move to d1 because of the e2 pawn. Can't move to d2 because of the king. Two kings may not stand next to each other. Can't move to e2 again because of the king. Can't move to f2 because the g3 pawn is defending his f2 pawn. He can't move to f1 because of the e2 pawn. The king has no way to run. And worst of all, he's already being attacked by the f2 pawn. Whenever a king is in check, if he's being attacked by an enemy piece and he can do nothing to stop that attack, it's check and mate. Or we simply say checkmate. That is the way in which we win a chess game, by checkmating our opponent. In other words, to attack his king so that he can't do anything to stop that attack. But once you... It's not that easy to understand in the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, you are going to have great fun thinking up creative plans to get your opponent's king into checkmate. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll see you in the next one when we introduce yet another piece.